You are listening to an all new episode of the Model Experience Podcast, live from the Model House. The Model Experience is the number one resource for models. Real models, real stories, real resources. Visit themodelexperience.net to learn more and be sure to follow us on Instagram at the Model Experience. So in 2014, um, uh, this woman like commented on one of my pictures and she was like, hey, you should be a model, email me. And I was like, okay, I didn't believe her, but I had just moved to LA and I was like, whatever, I'll try anything. And so I emailed her and I met with them and it looked very legitimate, but I just didn't believe it was really a thing because I had never seen plus size models before at that time. So um, I left that meeting and I had no intention. Sorry? They like an agency? Yeah, it was the agency I'm signed to now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I left, and then a few weeks later, my friend submitted me into um, this modeling contest for Wet Seal, and he did it on the last day. What? I remember that. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. I submitted too. I lost. Really? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I I ended up winning, and um, I did this photo shoot with them, and then I was like, okay maybe this could really be a thing. So then like a few months later, I waited so long, but I hit the same woman back up who's my agent now. And I asked if she was still willing to sign me and she said, yes. And that's how I became signed. (laughs) That's That's amazing. So you got signed and then you won this wet seal contest. You got, Mm -hmm. and what happened after that? And then I booked my first job which was with um it was i can't remember if it was ebony or essence magazine but one of those and (laughs) yeah yeah but i didn't know like magazines don't pay hardly anything and so i was like damn i could have made more work you know my other job more money in my other job than i did here you know um and then i booked a campaign and then the campaign was canceled last minute And then I booked another job right after that and my flight was canceled last minute. So I wasn't able to make it. So it was like back to back failures. And I thought, because I had just quit my full time job with steady income. And I thought I had made like the biggest mistake because I didn't know what I was getting myself into. So it took me like a year and a half to two years to really work consistently. It was rough starting out though it was really rough it always is but can i ask you what was your job so before i was working as a receptionist at this uh production studio and i re- like just got promoted before i got into modeling and i literally quit my job like right after i got promoted and i was like oh my god i'm taking such a huge leap of faith but um i mean i'm glad i did it now <laughs> no risk no reward you know yeah exactly <laughs> faith, faith girl. yeah for what sure you like your big like breakthrough uh job that kind of propelled you like it could have been a magazine that maybe didn't pay so well that- yeah no totally that's i mean that's like the trade-off with magazines right you don't get paid well but it's great exposure um but the job that like took me to the next level was sports illustrated and um that was a submission as well like i just i literally submitted on the last day that they were taking submissions and i ended up being one of the finalists and in the magazine the following year so yeah that definitely like catapulted me into a new level for sure congratulations that's amazing thanks (laughs) was probably so excited (laughs) yeah like i I really didn't think they would even notice my submission because they had gotten thousands, but sure enough, they did. <laughs> so you were on set today, and that's something I want to touch on because mm-hmm. I'm in the middle of a pandemic, and so yeah. uh, models and entertainers have just been like put on hold totally. So yeah. tell us about like going back to work. What's that like? So I've been doing um, shoots at home. I have a pretty cool setup here. I have a garage and I converted it into like a photo studio. So I'm able to get e-com shots here and I'm able to get more like social media or campaign shots like in and around the house or we'll like drive to a park or something. Um, 
but yeah, my roommates help me and I live with, you know, I'm around them anyway. So I'm being really safe. <laughs> so yeah, it works out really well. With your garage e-commerce studio, do you ever package that to clients? And has that helped you in terms of like- Oh, definitely. Garage? Yes. So when we first went on quarantine, I, I was out of work for like the first month. I think I went on quarantine officially on my birthday, March 19th. And so um, that's like through mid-April, I didn't have any work and I was like, man, like this is crazy. And I'm used to working every day and I was just getting restless. I was like, I gotta like do something else. I've made all the TikToks I could make. So I, um, I started just like taking pictures around my house and I got a softbox light just online and put it in my my garage and like did some sample photographs and I sent it off to my agent and was like hey send this send, send this to clients because clients were asking about at home shoots anyway but I knew like I could get a lot of the jobs if I showed them I have like a professional setup and it looks really good like honestly I would love to continue shooting at home it's been very convenient <laughs> you're gonna have to show me the setup at some point because <laughs> Oh yeah. To work too. <laughs> yeah, no, it's literally my garage. It's a white wall, concrete floor and a softbox. So yeah. Brands can't really like produce a shoot right now. So yeah. it makes mm -hmm. sense to hire a model who's going to package everything and do it for you. It's like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It works out really well and they've been really pleased with it. So it makes me happy. So that means you're super like business savvy. I feel like. Do you yeah, like, I think you have to be as a model. Yeah, as a freelancer in general, you have to be business savvy. You have to be aware of, you know, scheduling, money coming in, money going out. Like it's it's a lot of time management and being on quarantine really just threw me for a loop. Like getting back into work, it has thrown me off so much because I feel like I can't get on a consistent schedule, you know? Yeah. Well, um right now so it makes sense yeah like oh it's but I'm trying to do better um I almost said man I need an assistant but I was like no you just need to manage your time better <laughs> so, yeah. um, I know that you worked with Fenty yeah mm -hmm. and that's amazing big fan so tell me how that came about um let me see what was my okay so I got booked by them because this is what I do a lot, and for any listeners, this is a great way to get brands to notice you. Um, I will buy product from brands that I want to work with, and I will shoot in the style that they shoot in. So I like I will go out. I I'll do it big, you know. I I do this all the time, and it's worked. It's worked almost every single time that I've done this when I do it, you know, correctly. I think. But I'll go, I'll buy their clothes and shoot as if they were shooting the campaign. You know, it's almost like you can't even tell, if, was this really a Savage campaign or is this just her doing social? So that's what I did. And then I got booked there a month later. And then I worked with them like over the course of a year and then was able to walk their fashion show. Um, so was that your first show or no? Um, no, that wasn't my first one, but it was my biggest one for sure. Like I was so nervous, but it was, in it was incredible. Like I've, I've still rewatched that like on a consistent basis, <laughs> but yeah, it was cool. That's amazing. So tell me about the fourth photo shoot. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so I have a social collab with them and I'm kind of picky with the collabs that I do on social media because I want to, you know, I want to do everything with intent. I don't want to like half-ass shoots anymore. So um, I knew I wanted to do just something epic. And I had seen like girls um, incorporate horses, not girls, but, but like publications, magazines, incorporate horses into photo shoots. And I was like, okay, this is cool. Um, I haven't seen it with lingerie. And then I was like, okay, let me get two horses, not just one. And then I was like, okay, let me stand on it. Let's try everything. And let's just try to elevate, elevate, elevate. So uh, yeah, that's how that shoot came about. Wait, are you a 
you must not have been afraid. Were the horses cool? That were they they were trained or they were cool. Yeah. So I rented studio horses. Didn't even know that was a thing. But um, there's this production company that rents out trained animals for shoots and videos and stuff like that. So I rented them from this company, and they had trainers come with them. Um, but standing on them, it was pretty scary. Like, I'm not going to lie. But I just had to, like, I knew I was like, it's just one shot. Just get it for one shot. So, wait a minute. You, you paid basically for, like, you you invested yes. in yourself. And put yes. Yes. So that's the biggest thing, too. Like, when you, I think you need to invest in yourself as a model. And that's not just, like, test photos. But that's representing yourself on social media as well. Um, because you never know who's going to see you. And so... Um, for my last Savage collab, I had, uh, I was with them for like six months. I didn't take home any money from any of those photo shoots. I put it all, I put all the money into each photo shoot and I knew it would like help me secure another deal and lead me to bigger deals. And now I'm able to like bring in some revenue now. So that's like my thinking behind all the social media collabs that I get, you know, when I get my first one, I definitely want to make sure that they give me another one. You're good at leveraging, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's dope. One of the things that we like to kind of push our models to do is like get into the business mentality because I feel like most of the household names out there, they don't just stick for their looks. You know, they yeah. because they're like, I don't know. I think some of the like, some of the common denominators are definitely like personality, attitude, mm -hmm. um, investing in yourself. What do you think has helped you, like, business-wise? Um, I think business-wise, like, on a personal level, my accountant has helped me the most. Every model needs a good accountant. And I, I my agent told me this when I first started, Ooh. but it was like, I mean, I'm not making that much money anyway. But then, like, when you start making money, you need to have somebody that's going to tell you how much you need to put away, like if you need to become an LLC or become incorporated or, you know, start putting aside money so you can pay taxes quarterly instead of annually, like taxes, they will come to bite you in the ass as a freelancer. It, like hands down, that is the best advice I would give someone. Get a good accountant. Now, you an LLC? outside of, huh? Are you an LLC? Yeah. Ooh! I mean, <laughs> yeah. I know, and it's so stressful. Yeah. <laughs> right. I love that. that means, like, longevity, your shelf life will go above and beyond. Mm -hmm. What do you think about acting? Is that something you feel like a lot of, like... Definitely. And I feel like a lot of models... I think if you're a good model, then you could transition into acting easily if you know you're comfortable in front of the, in front of a camera and that's something you want to do because modeling is acting a lot of the time just without words um yeah. yeah so i think it's like a very you know easy matriculation to go from modeling to acting it kind of makes sense so it's definitely something i'm interested in true you know you should you should try it uh, i will say though some people just can't act some people yeah like, totally I just, yeah that's like model but it just doesn't translate into acting. yeah which makes sense you know, <laughs> it makes sense too and I totally like I back that 100 percent yeah have you done any castings like digitally since quarantine that are just like a FaceTime or anything yeah mm -hmm, yeah well not FaceTime it's just like a submission actually no no I had one I had one yes um and it was just the regular casting just like i'm talking to you guys right now but yeah mm -hmm. your studio you like hey right <laughs> yeah have you done any virtual shoots no i've seen a lot of the facetime shoots but i'm not a fan it's like an iphone selfie like i can do that without anyone else you know so That's true yeah. it's true I think yeah just like using that as leverage to like keep busy you know what i mean because I, yeah. I want to try it. My friends have like reached out to me, but I just, it's not the same. It's so no. much. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. And I figure like if you if you're really serious about not saying that people aren't, but if you're really serious about social distancing and really nervous about like coming into contact with people, you can stay six feet apart with a photographer and still get a shot. Yeah. You know? So um Change yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm just personally not a fan of them. Yeah. Yeah. So you have your own uh podcast too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's it called? It's called The Thick, and it's <laughs> right. It's, <laughs> it's me and my uh, best friend who do it. We're the hosts, and our tagline is: We talk about everything from love, life, and lipo. <laughs> and lipo is just like beauty and image and stuff. But yeah, uh, and we come out. We put episodes out every Tuesday. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Let me find it. Oh, everywhere. iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, iHeart, Google Play, everywhere. All oh, you have to do is ooh. Google TA and then Tabria Majors pops up. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's it's like wild. you just spell like the first two letters and it's like, what? <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> you didn't know. I've been Googling myself. <laughs> I know. I stopped because some stuff, some yeah. people can be really nasty, but okay, yeah. So about that really quick. Um, how do you feel you obviously have some clout surrounding you you obviously have made a, a name for yourself how does it feel to have you know how do you deal with this level of fame if you want to call it? <laughs> right <laughs> um uh i honestly i just it stopped, stopped reading comments and just ignored it um that's the only way i know how to deal with it personally and that's always my advice to people um because the more you read it the more like you'll internalize it and believe it and most of the time, like overwhelmingly most of the time, it's literally like one comment out of hundreds or thousands of positive ones. Thank you yeah. the most. Yeah, and they're just, they just want a reaction. They're just trying to get your attention. So like, why would you even give any of your energy to that person? So yeah, I just ignore it. It takes a while to figure that out though. I used to be clapping back. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh, you wanted to try me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I have a question. Are there levels to like plus size in terms of like, I guess, different sizing? Yeah. It's something that's not like explicitly stated, but for plus size, there is curve and then plus and it's just curve and plus really. So okay. curve, in my opinion, is like a size six to 12 or six to 14. Hi, six? What? Yeah, it's technically, it's curve. not straight size, so they're considered curve. And then anything above that is plus size. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a question, sorry, this is like totally in a different route, but what's the no, nicest sorry. thing anyone has ever said to you, like about your career ever since you've taken up? Oh my gosh, the nicest thing. Yeah, what um, Honestly, it's messages from girls and young women who are always saying like that I helped inspire them in some way or help them gain confidence in some way just by posting pictures and being myself, which is like that sometimes sounds so That's crazy so to me. Crazy. You know? It's so rare. Like, honestly, I feel the same when I see you. I'm like, damn, okay. Like, let me get out here. <laughs> Make it seem like, I don't know, like you, you make it feel like, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but you kind of make it feel like anyone can be sexy. No, totally. Like, yeah. Like, oh man, you make me feel like, okay, maybe I can step up to the plate, you know? Yeah. And I mean, that's what I want to do. And like, it really, uh, it's really flattering to me when I get those comp, uh, when I get those messages, like it really means a lot. But yeah, that, that's definitely the nicest thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, we're going to pretty much wrap it up. We like to keep it short, sweet, and to the point. But oh, I like know, that. Yes. Well, <laughs> oh, um, just give, like, top two or three tips for any aspiring models. Like, if I'm just getting mm -hmm. started, and I don't have the right photos, I'm not sure where to go. Yeah. Okay. So, for aspiring models, if you want to get signed traditional routes, submit your photos online to agencies. Every agency will have a submission process and follow their directions to a T. Do not send your portfolio or anything. They want your digital. So follow their directions and submit them. Uh, so my second suggestion is to do what I said earlier, 
and act like you're shooting for the brand. Um, if there's brands you want to work with, you need to buy their product and shoot in the vein that they shoot in, tag everybody, um, and you may get noticed. It worked for me and it may work for you. And third, I would just say be persistent and don't give up. I get told no far more than I get told yes. And I'm, you know, somewhat established in my career. So do not get discouraged if people tell you no, if they tell you you're not the right fit or not the right whatever. Just keep trying because someone out there will take notice. For sure. All right. Well, tell us where we can find you on Instagram because I'm actually about to follow you and you better follow me back. Girl. Yes, <laughs> I will. Yeah. <laughs> don't be bougie. Don't be bougie. Uh, no, I won't. I won't. Um, to Bria Majors everywhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> If you're a new model looking to take your career and portfolio to the next level, visit themodelexperience.net.